Hey, well, today we're going to be talking about self-leadership. Here's what I've discovered about leaders. When someone is hired to be a leader in an organization, what often doesn't come with the gig is a leader for the leader. <laughs> One of the biggest hurdles that leaders actually face is not actually leading their people. I believe it's actually leading themselves. Most leaders are often given titles with very little vision. They're often given expectations with very little direction. The old saying rings true. It's lonely at the top. You may not be the most qualified person to motivate yourself, but you do have the most availability. So here's what I've developed. I've developed seven questions I believe every leader should be asking themselves to give them the tools they need to lead themselves when no one else is available. The first question is what I like to call the self-awareness question. What's it like to follow me? What's it like to follow me? Do you know what it's like to follow you? Have you ever followed a leader that wasn't self-aware? I mean, haven't we all? It was a leader who had overrated their strengths. They had underrated their weaknesses. It was a leader that wasn't aware of their limitations. They were unaware of how their words impacted others. And here's what I know about you. And here's what I know about me. We are all in danger of becoming that leader that isn't self-aware. How do you find out what it's like to be on the other side of your leadership? Ask around. You better ask somebody. The second question uh, that I believe every leader has to be asking themselves is the team player question. And that question is this, what credit can I give away? Whenever an organization or department is having success, everyone wants to take credit. In many cases, whoever gets the most credit often gets the most bonuses or promotions. I mean, have you ever been in a meeting and you shared an idea that was immediately dismissed to only have that same idea brought up three months later that is esteemed brilliant. Everyone's like, oh, that's an amazing idea. And they're giving credit to someone else. That's very frustrating, right? Now here's the deal. While everyone in the organization is ruthlessly climbing, a leader should be someone that is helping the team grow, helping the team climb. A great leader looks for ways to give credit away in recognition to other people. Now here's the deal, giving away credit may not get you a bonus, but it just might get you something that actually matters to your success as a leader, and that's respect. People can follow you because they have to, or they can follow you because they get to. The third question is what I like to call the humility question, and that's this, what mistakes can I own? What mistakes can I own? Whenever an organization or department is experiencing failure, everyone wants to place blame on others. When things are going south, not many people want to volunteer and raise their hand and take ownership of their mistakes. We've all watched a leader unravel when things aren't going well and they start blaming others for what was actually probably started by a mistake that they made. I mean, at some point, we all have to figure out a way to make sure we're not that leader. How do we do that? We have to own our mistakes. Own your mistakes. The fourth question is what I like to call the self-improvement question. It's how can I get better? How can I get better? Apathy is the Achilles heel of a leader. In my executive coaching practice, the word that often comes up with leaders a lot is this word, boredom boredom. They've plateaued. No one is challenging them. Nothing is challenging them. And once again, what you have to understand is you've got more availability to challenge yourself more than anyone else in the world. So you have to be asking this question or you run the risk of becoming antiquated and the organization will quietly lose trust in you to lead them in the future. The next question that I think is vital for self-leadership is the fifth question. I call this the purpose question. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Here's what everyone in the organization can feel when you're phoning it in, when you've got one foot out the door, when your mind is somewhere else. And at some point you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, 
why you're doing it and why you're in the position in the first place. Are you doing it for the money? Are you doing it to be seen? Are you doing it because it's the family business? Are you doing it because it's your only option? Your why is just as important as your what because your why is contagious. The sixth question I think is very important. This is the succession question. Who am I equipping for the future? Who am I equipping for the future? If you want your organization or department to grow, you have to equip leaders for growth. Companies plateau because they're often reliant on a few rock stars with limited capabilities. It's not just about how you can get better as a leader. It's also about who you can bring up under your wing and equip to take something off of your plate. When things grow significantly, you'll have to fly a little higher and someone will need to succeed you. What are you doing now to equip someone else for that moment in the future? And the last question is this. This is the transparency question. Number seven, who knows who I really am? One of the things that often comes with leadership roles are a multitude of facades to hide behind. Corner offices, six and seven figure salaries, watches, designer purses, luxury cars. These aren't bad, but they all send signals to everyone else that you're good. But what if you're not? What if you're not? good? What do you do when you have all that and you're completely depressed? What do you do when you've got everything everybody else wants, but you can't shake anxiety to save your life? What do you do when everyone publicly likes a photo of your beautiful family that you know is privately falling apart? What do you do when you're succeeding in business, failing as a pair? Whenever I encounter a leader that is completely unraveled to uncontrollable addictions that have damaged their most important relationships, the line I hear the most from the people closest to them is this one. I had no idea they were struggling. I had no idea they were struggling. Who knows who you really are? I live by this motto. Everybody doesn't have to know, but somebody has to know. That could be a counselor, an inner circle of friends. But what I know to be true about you and me is what grows in the dark often comes out in the light. I'd rather be embarrassed with a few friends privately about a struggle than to let it boil over and eventually be embarrassed with everyone I know publicly. These are the seven questions that I believe can help you lead yourself when you're the only option 